What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible, as many great debaters as possible, as many of these first and 15ths as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. We appreciate you getting us this far. And if you haven't already, please, while you're down there, join, become a member to Unique Access Entertainment. There's three tiers, and that really helps to cause. Now, today on the 1st and 15th, this post is inspired by my friend JD. You guys probably been catching some of his interviews. If you haven't already, we have a JD playlist you can check. There's the link to that right there. Interviews with JD from the Lynch Mob, dropping a lot of gems and really an incredible, incredible conversation and excited for everybody to be watching those and watching more of them. But JD had posted about, you know, he th his saying that he thought that this beef referring to Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef was good for hip hop. And I think, you know, in a lot of ways it is. And most importantly, I think it's great that a lot of people are talking about lyrics and lyricism and this type of thing, which often when we hear discussion about rap these days, lyrics are usually only brought up because of the uh, base, simplistic nature of them. Whereas with Kendrick Lamar in particular, his lyrics in these disses to Drake are remarkable, layered, double, triple entendres, double, triple meanings, double, triple wordplay, all kinds of things going on with Kendrick Lamar. And I think that brings an excitement to rap that is good for hip hop and good for lyricists is just good in so many different levels. But that got me to thinking is beef in general good for rap? And, you know, I wanted to look at some of these big beefs. There's so many throughout rap history that we can talk about and we are going to talk about here today and get some insight and perspective as we go through things. Of course, an early one was the Juice Crew versus Boogie Down Productions. And, you know, the bridge is over, of course, helped. Uh, South Bronx helped Boogie Down Productions. Those two records in particular really helped put Boogie Down Productions on the map, launched the career of Karis One and Boogie Down Productions. But also around this time, you know, uh, said G, who I just did a great interview with there. You can check the link to that too from Ultra Magnetic, worked on the Criminal Minded album, of which both South Bronx and The Bridges Over are on. And, you know, these songs, you know, were hugely impactful, hugely important. And it was about the lyrics then because Karis One was talking about hip hop, the creation of it, and then uh, the Bridges Over being this this to, of course, MC Shan and the Juice Crew, but he got everybody else, you know, Marley, Mr. Ma Marley Marl, Mr. Magic, Roxanne Shante. Lots of people were, were catching it from The Bridges Over. But, you know, this beef, as far as I know, and, you know, this helped hip hop in a way that it got this excitement going. It helped the Boogie Down Productions get in the game, really. And it helped also say like oh wow there's something going on here we need to pay attention to uh similarly we get a little bit later is the LL Cool J and Kumo D beef and what excited me about this back in the day is unlike the Boogie Down Productions versus Juice Crew where that one was pretty much it was you know pretty much over pretty quickly the great thing is that LL Cool J and Kumo D were making records going back and forth dissing each other Kumo D put a Kango under his How You Like Me Now album cover which was crazy to see because of course LL Cool J one of his trademarks was wearing the red Kango at the time so that was wild to see that it made it into album covers and then of course the disc records were going back and forth and this, you know, back in the day, music wasn't released so quickly. It wasn't instantaneous. So these beefs would last a little while. And at that point, the LL Cool J Kumo D one was going on for years. And then uh, to the break of dawn, LL, I think, put, you know, the last note of that beef. But the great thing about it is, you know, with LL Cool J's Jack the Ripper, Kumo D's Let's Go, these were like 
you know, lyrical endeavors. And it was about the lyrics. To my knowledge, they, it never spilled over into something more sinister or more wild. It was really like, this is lyrical. And, you know, some people liked LL. Some people thought he won. Some people liked Kumo D. Some people thought he won. But regardless, the great thing about it was here were two top tier rappers, two of the best of all time going at it and lyrically uh, dissecting each other and calling each other out, which I thought was good and really was exciting. And then soon thereafter, of course, we have Ice Cube and NWA and what they did, as did uh, NWA do in general, they ratcheted up the violence and the controversy and the chaos of it all with all kinds of craziness on the brothers of really starting on 100 miles and running and then the brothers for life album by nwa and then of course nwa breaks up slash ice cube levels them with no vaseline which you know nwa as mc ren told me didn't respond because um, NWA had disbanded already, so there wasn't really anything to say, even though Dre and Snoop continued dissing Ice Cube on the Chronic. The good thing about it was, you know, that didn't escalate into anything, but it did give us a lot of great music, and it was, you know, an amazing moment for rap. And thankfully, you know, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube have worked together extensively since then. And Ice Cube has worked, you know, with MC Ren extensively. So, and there was even talks and hopes and wishes that Easy e would have, before he passed, been able to reunite NWA. Sadly, that didn't happen. But the Chin Check record that was on the next Friday soundtrack definitely uh, helped that happen in the way that it did, getting Ice Cube back in the fold and Snoop Dogg replacing Easy e But that's that. And, you know, moving on, of course. Probably the biggest thing in rap history as far as beef wise was Biggie vs. Tupac. And this one, of course, had a lot of excitement. It had a lot of sensationalism because rap had gotten bigger. Rap was now every year getting bigger and more on the radio, more videos, more exposure, more rappers in movies, more rappers getting endorsements. And so by the time we get to the mid 90s with Biggie and Tupac, rap was bigger than ever and had just been steadily growing and Tupac in addition to Biggie of course he had a number of other rivalries Mob Deep, Jay-Z, so many people that uh, Tupac you know was slanging disses to but ultimately this shows the most extreme example of why beef can be bad for rap which is of course both Biggie and Tupac were killed and some of the uh, aftermath of that still continues to this day. And in addition to losing uh, these icons in music, you know, we lose the people. And I think that's something that a lot of consumers forget that, yes, these are artists. Yes, these are people that we listen to their music or watch them in a con go to their one of their concerts or watch them on a TV show or in a movie or buy products they're endorsing or support their own businesses but these are actually still people so biggie had kids tupac you know had his mom and there's just a lot of stuff that happened it's not just that they died it's the you know all the other people that are affected by their loss uh, that are you know near and dear to them and that's the ultimate tragedy of what this beef can escalate to and we've seen that happen Biggie and Tupac being a prime example. And like I said, Big, uh, Tupac had all these different beefs, one of them with Jay-Z. And Jay-Z, I would argue his best, most significant or important beef was with Nas. And we got a lot of great songs out of that too. And that one, I never got the sense that that was going to escalate into real street violence. But like NWA and Ice Cube, like Biggie and Tupac, Jay-Z and Nas got very personal with their disses, very insulting, bringing in family members, bringing in women. Just, you know, that was taking it to different dimensions and making it far more than just, I would argue, what Juice Crew uh, and Boogie Down Productions, by and large, because Karis One did have a few uh, rather personal crazy disses, but, you know, the LL Cool J and Kumo D were more dissing each other as opposed to bringing family members and uh, sex and all these other things into the discussion. So 
I would say the Jay-Z and Nas was good. And most importantly, I think the great thing about the Jay-Z and Nas is that we saw that they were able to work together when Jay-Z was at Def Jam and get Nas signed Nas, and then they collaborated and they were able to show, yes, we had our differences, but we were able to move past them, do songs together, do business together. Uh, and, you know, that's what hopefully this is all about being able, you know, to work past differences, being able to do great things together and help push the genre forward. Of course, we have uh, something where that didn't really happen it is a 50 Cent Ja Rule. And I would say like Tupac, 50 Cent was the master of having a lot of enemies and using that, uh, you know, in 50 Cent's instance to bring attention to himself and propel his career. So, of course, that was... Um, you know, with uh, 50 Cent did that throughout his career. And of course that happened with Ja Rule, but he, you know, he had long running beasts with Game, with Rick Ross, with Diddy, etc. So this is something that rap used and rappers have used. They manufactured beefs back in the UTFO Roxanne Wars days to get in the game. Uh, Supernature did that with the show and the show Stopper. So this is something that's been going on since the beginning of rap, basically, you know, another hoe by JJ Fad. They use that to get in the game by dissing Roxanne Shante. And, you know, it's just something that people did to get in the game. But, you know, when we get to this Kendrick Lamar and Drake, that's why I think this is the type of thing that is good and bad for rap. On the positive side, you know, as I've highlighted, we get lots of great music. We get the artists seeming to deliver under pressure. Kendrick Lamar is driven to do this and to have all these great songs going after and dissing Drake. And I would say it's worked. Um, you get lots of discussion for the fans, which is positive and bringing some excitement to the genre. We had a lot of people before the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef really bemoaning the you know basic nature of rap lyrics and not being happy with the direction of rap. But I think... The Kendrick Lamar uh, Drake beef was good in the sense that it really helped bring attention back to lyrics and about the craft and about the genius of lyrics that we see, especially with Kendrick Lamar's uh, songs going after Drake. Of course, with the negative side, there's the death, as examined earlier by discussing the Biggie and Tupac. But generally speaking, even when nobody gets killed, we do see this, it's creating this environment of negativity and uh, hostility, neither of which, generally speaking, is good. We have enough of that in the world, and sometimes rap adds to that, and obviously on occasion that also leads to actual bodily harm or death. But labels can also use this... Uh, to their quote-unquote advantage, which I would also say is yet a neg another negative side of, of beef and how it affects rap and hip-hop culture in general. And with said G, uh, check out the interview like I was saying earlier, but he talks about how the labels were saying, oh, if you make a record with Tim Dog Diss and Compton, we'll give you a record deal. And right there, that just shows like this beef stuff can be manufactured and the people that are have nothing to do with it stand to benefit greatly from it don't get their hands dirty reap the profits and then someone like tim dog is you know in the crosshairs and that obviously isn't a good thing either now that does a lot of what i say and what i think and it's you know it has this positives and it's negatives like most things in life but what do you think definitely hit me up in the comment section let me know what you think about what i was saying about some of these beefs or some of the other beefs that you thought were important that had positive or negative outcomes that I didn't bring up. Of course, there are dozens of other rap beefs I didn't discuss, but I wanted to bring up some of the bigger ones I've seen people talking about recently and that are just overall in general important for rap history and tie into what I was getting at. So hit us up in the comment section, like, subscribe, and share to Unique Access. Join and become a member if you haven't already. And follow me on all social media at Soren Baker. We appreciate your support. Look forward to hearing what you think. And we'll catch you next time on the 1st and 15th.